Hello and welcome to 12 to Your Health. I'm your host, Dr. Derek De Silva. Coming up in today's show, we'll talk about fertility issues, but first, another issue that affects many women, and that is breast cancer. As with any cancer, finding the best treatment to eliminate tumors is first and foremost. But for breast cancer patients, it's important that cosmetic concerns are not forgotten in the process. So a team of doctors from different specialties working in tandem can be particularly valuable. My next two guests are just such a team. Dr. Leia Gendler is a board certified breast surgeon specializing in benign and malignant breast disease at Morristown Medical Center. Also joining us today is Dr. Brian Glatt, a board certified plastic surgeon who specializes in breast reconstruction surgery also at Morristown Medical Center. Both of you, welcome to the program. Thank great, you. Great Thank to right have you here. You know, the, the whole idea of a team working together in any cancer is, I think, imperative, but I think probably more important in breast disease. Uh, Dr. Gandler, talk to me about that. Uh, there are so many different specialties involved in the treatment of breast cancer and when a woman is first diagnosed, everyone weighs in on what will be her best therapy. Um, they include medical oncologists, radiologists, radiation oncologists, pathologists, and the different types of surgeons involved, both breast and plastics. Now talk to me about that. Why is it so important that a breast surgeon and a plastic surgeon, again, seems obvious, but, but sometimes the obvious is not so obvious. Why is it so important that you guys work together? Well, you know, the gold standard today is to try to perform a reconstruction or breast reconstruction immediately at the time of the mastectomy. And in order to get that done properly and timed right, everything needs to be set up in advance. So once um, Leah, for instance, determines that someone may benefit from breast reconstruction, um, she'll typically send them to a plastic surgeon, um, such as myself, um, to plan a reconstruction to be done at the same time. So everything is lined up to be done at once. Why is it important? Is it, is it important and have the studies shown that if we do the, the mastectomy along with the reconstruction at the same time, are the outcomes better? Why is it better to be done together? There's no difference in the outcome regarding local recurrence or overall survival, but to be able to leave an operating room with a reconstructed breast when a mastectomy is indicated is, offers enormous benefits in the salud mental of surviving their breast cancer and being healthy overall on the other side of their treatment. Mm -hmm. And not, not only a physical benefit, but a psychosocial one as well, significant. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, I think that's a very important piece to come out of the surgery and to make sure that, you know, anatomically, if you will, that everything is there. Let's talk a little bit, uh, very quickly, about the some of the symptoms that we need to look at when it comes to breast cancer. Uh, the first one we have is a lump in the breast. Could you mm -hmm. just comment on that? Um, women do need to be performing their own breast self-exam monthly and a doctor needs to examine them once a year. Mammograms are started annually at age 40 and those can also detect a lump. But certainly any abnormality on your own exam needs to be brought to the attention of a physician. Uh, the other one we have is swelling of all or part of the breast. Right, so sometimes a breast will swell and almost look like the skin of an orange, and that can be indicative that cancer is in the skin or is blocking the lymph nodes underneath the arm. That's what you just mentioned also here, skin irritation or dimpling, mm -hmm. right? Correct. And what about nipple discharge, nipple pain? When uh, discharge is spontaneous, bloody, that's of concern. Breast pain is not as likely to be associated with breast cancer. Why is that? It doesn't um, hurt? I mean, cancer doesn't hurt in the breast? Very rarely does it hurt. So there are many hormonal changes that occur. All of the cells in the breast are responding to our normal hormonal milieu, and those changes can cause tenderness. So, and then uh, breast discharge, as you said, if it's bloody, then we've got a problem. Correct. That needs to be looked at immediately. Mm -hmm. What about a lump under the arm? A lump under the arm is very important to recognize as well, and, and when a woman is performing her own breast exam, she should feel up under the arm for any abnormality there. And so cancer in the breast can spread to the lymph nodes, and, and that is a way that it can be detected. Are women doing breast exams every month? Uh, no. Um, they're afraid of what they find. Breasts are difficult to exam. They're lumpy and bumpy and they are afraid of what they're feeling. So in a sense they need to do the exam with a physician, understand what's their normal, and then proceed into the future recognizing any change. Alright, so uh, the woman has had been diagnosed with breast cancer. Uh, you've recommended that the, 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 uh, the patient have a mastectomy. 
What are the options here uh, with regard to reconstruction? W w what, what do we do? H how do we go about determining that? Well, that's a great question, and it really differs by patient. Um, I try to take the totality of the patient into um, consideration when determining what might be the best course for someone. There's really three major ways to make a breast. There's artificial ways to make a breast, such as with implants. There's using your own tissue. And then there's methods that utilize both. And taking into account the patient's anatomy, um, you know, physically what is going on, uh, perhaps their family life, what kind of support systems they have in place, everything. Do they smoke? What's their general mm -hmm. health? Um, all of those things come together to help me determine what might be the best method for them, also considering what they uh, prefer themselves. Right, and, and I think that's where the individu individualization really comes in. Absolutely. You know, lumpectomy, mastectomy, reconstruction. Can you talk with us, talking about all that, what are we looking at right here? Those, those are, um, the most uh, state-of-the-art, uh, form-stable, cohesive silicone gel implants. And they all are made exactly the same. Uh, the one towards the top is the most projecting. In other words, given for uh, given a, a, a certain diameter, a width, um, that's the most projecting type of implant made, very suited for a breast cancer reconstruction patient as they don't have a breast anymore. The one on the bottom is a little less projecting, uh, more commonly used in a cosmetic augmentation where they don't require as much projection because there's already a breast in place. Mm -hmm. So the ones towards the top are more for a breast cancer patient, um, all of them being silicone gel fill breast implants. Okay, and, and that's the other one. You know, the other question that I get all the time is silicone versus uh, some of the saline. What, what, what's your th choice and where are we on that? I'd say 99 uh, plus percent of patients uh, tend to prefer to go with silicone gel filled breast implants. I don't formally ever recommend anything to a patient. My job is really to educate my patients to the maximal effect where they can make a good decision for themselves. Given all that, the safety of silicone has been well proven through the years, and I'd say almost every patient does choose to go with silicone. By the way, you have an event coming up. It's the Starry Night Gala sponsored by the American Cancer Society honoring our guests today. It's Saturday, May 12th at the Hamilton Farm Golf Club in Gladstone. Thank you very much for joining us. Great information. Pleasure to have you here. Stay with us on 12T Health. Later in the show, I'll answer some viewer email questions. And after the break, we'll talk about infertility, what causes it, and what you can do about it. But first, your health bite of the week. For moms and dads who are overworked and overtired, take a look at these energy-boosting tips.